Community Creatures, with more to come. A wave of patches and fixes. And a small glimpse at Arc 2 details. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to your regular art community news. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So, Lost Island, Creature Submissions, it's going off. You all know about this by now, I won't get into that too much. With a quick summary of the top 10 voted creatures within this list are going to make it to a final vote. Who commands that top 10 vote, we don't know, but I've got a feeling it might be wildcard, but we'll have to wait and see. And of course, there's some great suggestions. However, it's quite interesting to see how different it is compared to the top 10 list we did recently, where of course we did our own community vote. And one of these will be picked to be a creature in the game when Last Island drops and time is running out. You've got July the 23rd to get something in. So if you haven't submitted yet, get in quick and it's definitely worth doing. Said our lead community manager put out a tweet yesterday saying also with the creature voting keep voting no matter what it gives the team a good look at the type of dinos you want to see added to the game who knows what will happen it's a little way before arc 2 and a lot more we want to do potentially alluding that these top 10 creatures might all make the roster at some point we know how said likes to tease but get voting keep voting you never know although only one can be picked right now this top 10 list will give the devs a good idea to what you want in the game and may appear in arc 2 so get voting get involved and i'll leave a link in the description patches we've finally got some patches some fixes to the game more on pc than console but i'll get to that in just a moment but to run through the list that's come to pc and all will eventually come to console is there were some inaccurate timing effectiveness issues with some of the creatures i'm guessing the nuggling was definitely one of them or perhaps when they're scaled up if you don't know anything above 150 the timing effectiveness goes off the chart and it's so difficult to tame those higher level creatures i'm hoping that's what that is exploits are exploits they're going to happen with everything released in a new map and it's good to see that some have been patched client and server crashes and server stalls i'm hearing there's a lot of crashes going on out there at the moment keep reporting to the devs if your game is still crashing they need to know they need to be aware because ultimately if your game keeps crashing there's no fun in the game anymore megalodon gestation time is once again matched to the megaloceros what was it matched to before i don't know but there you go gestation sorted there were some placement issues with trophies and a lot of level design related bugs such as holes, floating foliage and incorrect volumes so no more floating plants I'm hoping. Structures built on a hover skiff will forward damage to the skiff so that means any structures built on your skiff will create damage to the overall health of the skiff which is pretty mega and I think that's seemingly a way to nerf them not to make them as OP as they possibly are. There were some desync reports that have been fixed and a bug with HLNA when it crafted certain items and unlocked that explorer note you wouldn't unlock that when you got a different character so that's been resolved now. They finally put in some fixes for Genesis part one Woo! it's been a while I've seen a lot of you saying that gen part one is broken at the moment and there's a few fixes, including a fix for Explorer Notes, a fix for the Tokyo Skiff mission, whereby the Hover Skiff wouldn't take off. You can now craft a Tech Replicator, apparently you couldn't before. And that's about it for Gen Part 1 so far. There was a fix on Extinction, apparently, whereby an Explorer Note was moved because it was in the mesh. There was a case where Wild Snow Owls wouldn't be able to attack, they've resolved that now. Opacity settings on HLNA, I didn't even know you could change the opacity settings on it. There was a few saddle engrams that were missing from the respective crafting stations, that's been resolved. Some more mesh exploits, they're, they're always coming. <laughs> there was a big bug with the text strider transmitter, where its inventory was being wiped on server load, which really sucked. And I'm aware a lot of people lost a lot of stuff. Well, that's been resolved now. And the bug where players could move netted creatures. I didn't even know you could do that, but I'd heard a few people say you could do this. Tried to, couldn't do it, but you can't do it no more. There were some cases where the noggling could attach in cases it shouldn't. And in some cases where after a noggling had attached, it would be in a broken state. Oh, I'm so glad that one's been fixed. It's been a nightmare to tame them because that has happened to so many people whereby it just goes in this weird state and won't tame anything so hopefully fingers crossed nuggling taming is a bit easier to do now the starwing strike mission where your camera will get stuck has been resolved now nugglings now respect the no flyer rules <laughs> whereby up until now if a nuggling controlled a flyer in a place it shouldn't like aberration a k for instance it would still be able to fly and people were taking a huge advantage of that well you can't do that no more 
six times structure damage has been removed from vents on gen part two didn't even know they had six times damage and thinking about it now they are pretty cool spots to build in but don't know if i'd do it myself fixed the case where a player sometimes did not get their race creatures or canoe and a bug where gen part two creatures were not able to hit level 500 on official servers as well as some shader and visual issues but then we move on to an even newer update whereby they decided instead Nocklings can attach the flyers and use them in non-fly zones, but just not underwater. It's surprising to see that they backtracked on this. I can see a lot of advantages to using flyers even when Nockling controls, but there you go. The net immunity cooldown has increased from 10 seconds to 30 seconds, whereby, of course, you couldn't net the same creature. You'd have to wait 20 seconds. They've now increased that to 30 seconds. And there's a new setting whereby when you cryo out a creature, it won't be netted instantly you have to wait a certain amount of time and unofficial this is 10 seconds but unofficials if you want to code this in and change that timer it's b enable cryopod nerf i'm guessing following that it's equals and then your timer to see how long you want that cooldown to be all the devs just need to clear up which setting the timer changes for this for console at the moment i'm afraid it's pretty slim although all of these patches will make their way to console playstation and xbox at some point at the moment you didn't get much you got some exploits fixed mesh server crashes the hover skiff thing on gen part one the text strider transmitter inventory issue and the hnla crafting explorer notes issue and that's it i'm afraid why it goes through a verification process with of course microsoft and sony pc steam is a lot easier to update but it's coming at some point i'm guessing the devs just submitted this far too late and then we've got to wait until next week to get all of these patches we saw on pc to come in next week for console they're coming just not yet giveaways 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 there's all the giveaways going on at the moment all the summer bash giveaways are going out and there's still plushies out there as well if you want to win them arc survival evolved have got a contest on their twitter whereby all you need to do is reply to this tweet with your favorite summer bash thing to be in to win a summer bash loot box but there's so much more going on out there at the moment i've even got one myself whereby you can win this summer bash loot box yourself and all you've got to do is like follow and retweet this tweet and you will be in with a chance to win and i am drawing this tomorrow so getting quick and if you watch the video there's a second chance to win one of these two and i'll be giving away more in the future and <laughs> i've got a dodo plushie giveaway within this video here so get involved watch the video interact with how the game plays and you'll be in with a chance to win that dodo plushie and the official arc discord is running a plushie giveaway as well so if you want to get involved with that i'll leave a link to their discord in the description so get involved in the discord if you want a chance of winning a plushie so craig brown craig brown i've spoken about him before the senior designer at studio wildcard put out a tweet alluding to something not a lot but it's Art 2 news. Woof. We haven't heard anything about Art 2 since last year. And it's great to hear something. That they're going to have an Arc 2 traversal meeting on Tuesday that is hyped about to show this off. And discuss design constraints for movement types. And there we go. They're revamping, reintroducing how creatures move in the game for Arc 2. Which I find very interesting. You can't deny that the creature's movement in Arc 1 is pretty solid. So how are they going to improve it? Traversal seems like such an open-ended question. It could mean so many things, like how dinos interact with the land, how they walk, their animations, or it could even be players. There's so many possibilities there. And like I said at the start of the video, there's not really much here to talk about, but Art 2, it's in progress. Discussions are happening, meetings, possibilities. But that's a way off yet. I think we're going to be talking more about Arc 1 for quite a while yet. And that's about wraps it up. I'll leave you with a video of Arc Tested, who is certainly an up and coming. He is growing quick if you want to check out Arc Tested. Certainly worth the time to check out as Arc Tested really does a deep dive into the things you really want to know. It's surprising how much Arc Tested goes into that sometimes you think, but you forget about. And then you watch this and think, ah, oh, good to know. So <laughs> like I described that well, go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this video. What do you think of the whole creature thing and possibilities of more creatures coming to Ark in the future? Ark 2 excited and what do you think this traversal thing means? How do you think it's going to change? Drop a comment below. Let me know. My name's Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, <laughs> peace out.